Lacey here with PopCultureMadness.com and ConcertBlogger.com and Muriel Palenka here with ConcertBlogger and PopCultureMadness.com with Behind the scenes. <laughs> mm. Yes. With Andy. Are you going to mention the Muppet that's also on top of the camera right now? <laughs> yeah. For, you guys can't see, but there's a full-size Muppet uh, puppet <laughs> on top of the camera. If you were going to name him, what would you name him? Uh, scruffy. Okay. Perfect. <laughs> From now on, Doc is what he's going to be. It looks like a piece of like Santa Claus's beard fell off. <laughs> <laughs> I just thought it looked like we gathered a bunch of dust yeah, from under well, something. No, yeah, he's gone through hard times. It's like homeless Santa Claus's beard. Come on in. Yeah. I don't want to introduce yourself. You're I'm, I'm, I'm you. wet. <laughs> That's my name. <laughs> I'm Julia. Okay. <laughs> Sit up here. Are you sure? Yeah, yeah please. Uh, we'll just room here. We, we have well, yeah, every year at Warped Tour. Oh, we'll do a whole thing. Awesome. Okay. Please, come in. Lunch. Can I take off my, my oh, really course. awesome outfit? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> okay. All right. All right. Well, during the costume change. <laughs> here. I got you. Yeah. I got you. <laughs> So, how are we enjoying a rainy, rainy war tour here in Camden, New Jersey today? Well, as you can see, uh, it's been it's gone to the plastic bags <laughs> in the body part of the war tour. Yeah. Where, uh, no, it's interesting. I think I woke up this morning and I was told by my bus driver that there was an 80% chance of rain. And uh, that 80% chance came through. And uh, I, I, I think I, this morning it wasn't raining at all. We were actually out riding our bikes earlier today. And uh, it was like super nice. And then all of a sudden, just before she went on stage, it just went nuts. Because I'm so emo. <laughs> so emo. So the sky is just like rain to pour <laughs> down. <laughs> Serenading the rain. Emotional. How was your show? By the way? Um, I, unexpectedly amazing. It really, like, I can't even believe. The fans here, they're so loyal and they've been around for so long and it just keeps getting bigger and bigger and um, it was just really awesome to be able to like, ah, oh, I can stop singing. You could hear the crowd singing along with you and it was just like, oh, yes, finally, yay. <laughs> so we're about halfway through War Tour now. Right? Yeah, I wow. think so, it's about the halfway point. Jeez, it seems like uh, it's kind of flying by really. Um, it's weird. We. The way that this, the routing worked this year, there's a bunch of off days at the very beginning, and then uh, we haven't had an off day in like a week. So I'm ready to take a shower. Like, <laughs> I mean, this is the rain isn't exactly the. We share a funk, so I would really like him to take a shower. Too. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm sure. I heard like it's just like the boot camp environment, and just like yeah. You know. Well, I mean, maybe for like I will say this: there are definitely people on this tour who have a lot worse to deal with than, than we do. I mean. It's obviously grueling in the heat and everything else, but fortunately, you know, we're in a position where it's a little bit nicer for us, so I, I can't really complain. There's a lot of bands who are on this that are, you know, in vans or cars or, mm -hmm. you know, making the, the, the food that everybody eats just so they can get a spot on the stage. So yeah. um, I'd give it up for them more than anything else. I mean, with us, you know, we're in a nice-ass bus with <laughs> my fucking stupid Absolutely. toys everywhere and everything. Like, you know, it's like, oh, it's so hard. I can I have enough time to fuck around and buy Iron Man. <laughs> Oh, my beer's freezing cold and it's so delicious. It sucks. <laughs> so, what are the plans for after Warped Tour? Uh, we're doing a, a co-headline tour with Bullet For My Valentine um, in the States. And then uh, as soon as that tour's over, we're going back to England and Europe. And uh, we had to cancel a tour in April in Europe uh, mm -hmm. due to the illness in the band. And um, we rescheduled that tour and we're going to finish that and then uh, go back to England and do um, one last little head headline run in England. For uh, to end the year, and then 2014 is looking like you know probably starting to make another record, or at least you know getting in the writing process for that. So you have thoughts swirling around right now. For Absolutely, that? I, I I can't I can't stop. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, I, I I thought I thought it would be possible to uh, you know let this record breathe for a while, and, and we have, but. I want to I go back in and make a better album. You know, I love I love what we did with Wretched in Mind, but I think we can do even better. So, so you know, and we like we like writing music, and I think it's important for bands to give their fans music when they want it. You know, some bands kind of rest on their druthers, and they go, okay, we made this album, and we love it. Let's go grow beards and sit in a log cabin and talk about how great we are. And you know, that's not my interest. I wanna I, I wanna keep you know reaching for the brass ring and, and you know, getting farther. So apart. funny, so funny, because literally Wretched in Mind. Like, I'm obsessed with it. Like, I remember when they were writing it, he would come home with the demos, and then when I finally got to hear it, and then I got to sing on it, it, the fact that you're so funny, it, you're so funny. <laughs> oh, I want to do better. Like, what? <laughs> it's a masterpiece. 
was like, are you kidding me? <laughs> so, and there are plenty of other people that share that same mindset. That's why I have to wonder, like, I'm where, like, oh where my do gosh. you go from there? You know? Masterpiece <laughs> part two. <laughs> nice. Yeah. nice. Is there any clues you can give us and maybe where the mindset is right now? Or is um, it just yeah, kind I, of in road mode right I, now? I think, I think I'd like to, to uh, you know, go down the route of making another, um, at least have a, a, a loose concept towards the album. I, I, I don't, we're not going to make a sequel to Wretched in the Vine. I think that okay. um, musically, I don't think that that's where the band really wants to, to go, is to do another one of those. But I think it would be cool to, to keep in the vein of a kind of storied album and having a, a cohesive s story that runs through. And um, I have a story that I, I've told a few people about that I think would be a really cool uh, way to go. And um, yeah, I'm excited. The, the whole idea is, uh, you know, we want to do something that is, is, I guess, important to how we feel. And if I can't find an idea that is intrinsically important to how we feel, then it's not worth doing. So I think I have something that's it, it, it hits a nerve with, with how we are as, as people. And, and literally for me, something I'd like to write about. Yeah, that's awesome. And I, you know, I think it was great that you guys managed to, in you know, 2013, release a concept album, especially with the way the industry is. With you know, it seems like we're trapped in a single market, and people are forgetting the the album artwork and the lyrics on the inside and all that type of stuff. They're not well, getting the whole package. We've always we've sold more physical copies of records than we have digital. Always have. Um, and that's such an that's it's such that's an awesome. amazing it's just, achievement. It's just our fan right base. Now. You know, they like to see. You know, we and we also like to give them a package. You know, there's posters and art and things that we did the art show in Los Angeles, and it's still up. And if anybody's in the LA area, uh, you can go and see artwork from all the years of the band you know we've always taken different artistic mediums very uh that, that put a large amount of importance on it because i feel like if you're going to build something that is um important to people it has to have every element you can't uh, you can't build a car and forget the wheels if it has a nice body it doesn't matter um and i think that we try to build the whole package with every album that we make because you know it's important for us this is our life I'm a high school dropout. You know, this is the only thing I got in my life. So. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, uh, it's important. To me. Oh, absolutely. So, I mean, how do you feel about the evolution? I mean, your veterans on Warp Tour. The last time I caught up with you guys was at Rock on the Range uh, back in May. And how do you feel about the evolution, even of the live shows at this point? We're a better band now. You know, I think uh, when you've been touring for half a decade together, you start to become very comfortable with with each other on stage. And I think that. If you were to see Black Veil Brides now, I think we're the best band that we've ever been on stage. I think the show is better. We're tighter as a band. We just know each other better. I mean, I've even I've even noticed it like when we first got together a couple of years ago. Like, they were still amazing then, but now it's like it's all become very, I guess it's natural and just it's just innate. And it's, it's like they don't even have to try anymore. They're just it's just awesome. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Like. Totally, yeah. I'm only yeah. paying her a small fee. <laughs> <laughs> and my uh, hour is over, so I'm out of here. No, it's funny because I know I obviously that. like him very much. <laughs> 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 no, I know. I mean, I remember seeing you guys at, at the Center back in like 2010, I think it was, and just watching you guys, you know, grow and mature as, as artists and musicians, and each album is just... You know, taking on a life of its it's just incredible to see. It's like, funny that that. Before that epicenter festival, I remember all of us sitting in uh, my apartment that we used to call the compound, which was essentially like it wasn't so much an apartment as it was like a Manson family bomb shelter. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, Jesus. Like the the kitchen wasn't really used as a kitchen; it was more of a place to throw the trash. And then we'd shut the door because we didn't want to deal with the smell. All the walls were painted with, like, get the fuck out, we hate you, there's blood everywhere. You, you wouldn't let me see it when we first moved in together. Yeah, we, I, actually, when we got together, I, I was like, okay, we're going to go live in a hotel for a while. She's like, you know, have a place. I do, but you're not. We're just going to go live in a hotel until I can find a new place. He's like, what? He's like, no, you can't. You can't go, and I'm going to go get my stuff. You're going to stay here because you can't come inside. The place is pretty legendary. Anyway, um... <laughs> It was one of those things where it was just like a, a people would be there, whether we invited them or not, to drink, and it was party all the time. And um, so I remember all of us on the floor with studs and our teeth, and we're building our costumes for that day at Epicenter. I had the big fucking shoulder pad, and we had like that was like when we really the goal was like we wanted to go out there, and and uh, we knew how vastly different we were from everybody else on that bill, and we were like, let's just make it even more different. If we're going to make you uncomfortable, let's make you even more uncomfortable. <laughs> and so, uh, yeah, I mean, it's also very childish in, in a sense, but it was just the way we felt. We were so, um, you know, we were so used to being uh, crushed down for what we were that we always wanted to rebel in some way. And 
Um, obviously now we don't wear as much of the makeup and all that stuff. A lot of that's just because you don't want to become a caricature of yourself. It's not because we're trying to disassociate ourselves from our past or our fans or anything. It's just that you can only dress up like a cartoon of yourself for so long before it starts to feel like rote. It doesn't, it doesn't feel interesting. Um, and I, we'll keep the theatricality in some way. We always will. I mean, we're the only band with fucking like smoke bombs and shit on stage. It's <laughs> oh, yeah. also like, Bowie, you know, what David Bowie said, like artists are constantly creating, yeah, uh, cre constantly evolving and changing and being different. And um, that's what I've definitely noticed with you know, Andy over the years. And um, you know, so that's just it's evolution. Oh, um, absolutely. I mean, I remember you saying to me in that interview so early on you know of just what your goals were and what you wanted to be and just to see that accomplishment happen it was just amazing <laughs> well you know i think um i've always been a firm believer that if if you want something you need to work hard for it and you know in as much as a lot of bands look at what we are and you know there's certainly people that talk shit about what we are that you can't really deny the work ethic that this band has and whether you deny that we have any musical talent or whatever else you can't say that we've not done everything we possibly can for as long as we've been doing this you know we've played in vfw halls to nobody and played in bars on egg crates and we toured in a car for a long time with our feet out the window because we couldn't all fit <laughs> you know, we stealing u-haul trailers by painting out the barcode number because we couldn't afford to buy a trailer like doing you know doing stuff that we did for years and years and then you start Locked to get out. success and then people start to go uh you know oh well that band they're, you know they're put together by a label or they're hot topic whatever and to me, it's like there's so many things that have been so interesting that have been brought into our, our career and so many things that I'm thankful for. So if somebody wants to make fun of Hot Topic or whatever else, I fuck them because I think that that's, I'm very thankful to the people at Hot yeah. Topic for taking us under their wing and putting us in their stores and giving a band like ours a chance to have retail. You know, it's not easy in this day and age. So any of the things that people throw at us, I always kind of, I'm thankful for. So, you know, I think that obviously the evolution of the band has been large. And if you watch the band today, it's going to be way different than when you saw us in 2010, but there's always that same sort of rebellious spirit to the band. Oh, absolutely. Well, we did have a few fans submitted questions from the Facebook page, uh, Andy Ferrisak's Paper Diet on okay. Facebook. And um, let's just pick one or two. So, okay. Okay. There's always one point in our lives where we get a spark and realize what we want to do. When did you realize that music was your passion? Was there anything that sparked that realization? And that was by Feather Face, DeAndre Leo. Uh, no, it was kind of always what I wanted to do. In, in, a, in a large way, it was my favorite thing ever. You know, it was like from the, from the time I was a little kid, I saw pictures of Kiss and stuff, and it was my, it was what I wanted. You know, and I think a lot of people feel that way. I know that I know that Juliet feels the same way. That it's all she ever really ever wanted. What? So, music. I hate music. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> obviously, hey, obviously. Yeah. <laughs> and we have time for one more question. Is there one thing in particular that can change your mood immediately? I was invited by Paulina Gotha. Um. I really like chicken wings. <laughs> Wait, what was that question? <laughs> Is there one thing in particular that can change oh, I, your mood immediately? I, I, honestly, absolutely. I thought you said something about Selena Gomez. <laughs> I don't know why. It was why. submitted by Selena was, Gomez. Oh. oh. <laughs> um, Paulina. Paulina oh, Gomez. Oh, I was like, oh, wow, babe. Selena you <laughs> going places. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I had Selena <laughs> submit <laughs> questions to me. Um, no, I think, you know, obviously the, the person that you're with can change. Really both positive and negative. Oh, that's very uh, sweet. Yeah, but, uh, <laughs> devil horns, that obviously. Would be. Um, I don't know. I, I, I'm a musician. I, I'm, I go on stage and I'm, I'm an entertainer. So if, if the audience is reacting to me, that'll always put me in a better mood. Awesome. Well, I want to thank you so much for joining me here at Warped Sword for joining us. It was always a pleasure to thank you catch for joining up me with you and box. Julia as well. Of it was course. A I'm home to just <laughs> crashing at the. <laughs> inner. No, it's awesome. <laughs> it's so much fun. Oh, no, it's definitely awesome. Uh, and yeah, definitely keep us super pumped.